Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today we've got a big old video about the Tax Neo 2, except one minor little problem. My microphone died precisely 1.7 seconds after I started recording the whole video, uh, and I didn't notice it till basically when I got off the bike. Um, so there's a bit of echo over this next little section here. Sorry, this is, sorry, I wish, I hate my microphones. I really, really do. Anyways, enjoy. Here is the Neo 2. Uh, now, it's not a ton different than the first generation Neo. In a lot of ways, it's kind of similar. And that's the general trend we see uh, across all trainers across the board for each year, kind of year after year. You're not looking at massive shifts between them. Uh, still, there's a lot of changes that are more under the hood than anything else. And kind of one of the most interesting ones is that they're now able to detect when your pedal goes by the trainer itself. And with that, they're able to detect both left side and right side and then generate basically pedal analysis. So the same kind of analysis that you would see on you know something like uh, vector pedals or a pioneer uh, pedals are probably actually more towards the pioneer side of things in terms of that visual analysis a bit more detailed in that realm but without any additional sensors on there uh, so they're actually detecting the passing of objects by the trainer itself really kind of cool stuff and in particular honing in on the pedal spindle um, as that goes by the they can really detect pretty much anything but that's really the strongest point of things that goes by the trainer each time uh, by the way if you can hear that banging Sorry, uh, my warehouse unit mates are going at it, and I think they're definitely using the wrong tool because it sounds like they're using like a sharpie to bang something in. Just use a hammer, guys. A big hammer. It's all concrete. It's just like this stuff right here. So they got to have something, something beefy. In addition to all that pedaling dynamic type stuff, they've done a bunch of changes under the hood around electronics. Uh, so the company says you've got to update your firmware a lot faster. You know, some of the stuff isn't really big ticket items, but it's still kind of handy. And then they said there's a bunch of electronics in here they've added that will enable new features down the road. Now we don't really know what those new features are. Tax isn't saying at this point in time. So it's kind of a bit like presents under the Christmas tree that are wrapped up. You know they're there. You know there's something in there we just have don't really know what they are. In the past tax added uh, that road feel uh, feature remember that the cobblestones like out of the isokinetic modes um, so they did actually add a lot of features down the road after the fact um, whether or not we'll see those new features like this Christmas or see them next spring or next summer or even two years from now it really kind of we'll have to see. Oh and then on top of all that the bottom of the unit is different as you'll see in just a second which is now a good time to get this thing unboxed. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just crack it right open here, take the sticker off. I don't know if that means they like reseal the stickers very, very carefully after my uh, flux incident. And if this has been tested or not, we'll, we'll find out. But um, either way, it's kind of just a first look at things. And so hopefully it goes smoothly for their sake and uh, my sake, because it makes my life a lot easier when things go smoothly. So inside the box here, we have uh, some paper stuff uh, talking about how to swap out uh, cassette. Okay, then we've got uh, their software, we've got customer support, we've got a power cable, then we have a skewer here, uh, so standard quick release skewer. Then we have the mother load of adapters. That is one thing they mentioned in uh, as new is that they added a bunch of adapters on here, and that is clear. They've added uh, a lot of adapters. Like you've got a lot of options here. I'll put the exact specs down there on the bottom right now. Uh, over here we've got a little brown box. Uh, I guess it's power, yeah. Uh, so it looks almost exactly like my uh, the power adapter. Um, so power plugs into this part right there. And then this goes into the trainer itself. Keep in mind with the Neo series though, you don't actually need to be plugged into power. It's one of the, the features of it. Um, this just goes ahead and it kind of keeps things ready to roll all the time as opposed to when you pedal it, you provide that power. Uh, still, it's something that's nothing underneath there. Good. Um, it's kind of a pretty cool feature. And then we have the trainer itself. And finally, we have the uh, front wheel block there. I don't feel there's anything else in there. It's a beefy box, so let me tell you. This thing is uh, pretty heavy. Slide this out of the way over there. So we've got the little um, foot right there. We've got the power cable situation. We have the paper junk. We have the quick release skewer and the adapter for through rocks and whatnot. And then finally the trainer itself. Uh, now the biggest change you'll notice immediately visually is the fact that this is blue on the bottom right there as opposed to black. Um, so otherwise, you know, it's basically pretty similar. You also can see the blue tax writing there as well. I'm sure some folks will like it, some folks not so much. Uh, personally, I'm more of like an all black kind of uh, trainer sort of guy, but to each their own. Uh, these fold out, so if I do it like this, you can probably see it more easily. There we go, click. And then as I click like that, you put that click, so this locks this in place there. And the same is true here. That also locks that in place. And then we put their cassette right there. Obviously, this looks exactly like a TIE fighter. There's really no question about it. Um, as always, 
flip this around, it is heavy, it's not exactly light. Um, you can see here's our flywheel there, uh, and then there's we got to put the cassette. So, despite being the most cons expensive consumer trainer out there, still no cassette on here. Um, so that's something that Wahoo does have an advantage, that the kicker does include a cassette. Uh, this is $1,349, I believe, uh, versus $1,199 for the kicker. A cassette would have been a nice touch. So, I'm grab my cassette, I'll toss it on here and get this thing rolling. Okay, so here is my cassette. Uh, it is not brand new, but I've just given it a nice uh, baby wipe clean, so it's good enough, I'd say. Um, I also cleaned up my drive trains on my bike earlier on, so that should be relatively clean. Uh, I think it's pretty much passes a reasonable test. So I'm going to get this installed, take me a couple seconds, because it's, it's not like super pretty and out of a box. Okay, then we're going to go take the cassette lock and clean tool there, and take this, stick it on there, stick it in, there we go, like that, and take this tool upside down and make it tricky for me, I will 100% do it wrong the first time. Told ya, always goes wrong the first time. And just simply tighten it up. There we go. You want to check that there's no play in it? Good, no play at all, so it's perfect. Uh, if there's any play, you've screwed something up. Um, it's as simple as that, to be honest. So, uh, don't worry, this is actually one of the first times I've done it right without having play, so that means I'm uh, like one for a hundred or something. So, with that all set up, put this here, we'll grab our power cable, get this thing all plugged up, I'll get my bike on it, and then I'll go for a ride. Ah, cassette, by the way. Not cassette. Quick release. I can't think anymore this time of day. Take this. Simply take it like this, in through the back, and we are good to go here. We don't need any of those parts for this particular uh, cassette arrangement, so we'll take all this stuff here and we'll toss in the box for another bike down the road. Okay, so I've got this hooked up on the screen there. I'm using my Mac because it's frankly easier to record the screen for you. But you can see it up there. Um, I've just got this mirrored from there to there. So we're going on to the power source here, and I'll select that. And you can see the Tax Neo 2 right there. Um, you also see the power top pub sitting back there. And if I were to go spin this real quick here for a second. Note the blue light goes on there at the bottom, by the way. You can see some of the other power meters here will enumerate that I have on the bike for comparison purposes. So we're going to select the Tax Neo 2. In this case, it's via Bluetooth Smart because I've got uh, no Amp Plus connectivity on my particular Mac right now. So if you're on a PC, you'll go ahead and you'll see Amp Plus there. Um, and if you use a Amp Plus adapter for your uh, Mac, you'll see Amp Plus as well as Bluetooth Smart. Um, you can see it went ahead and automatically added it for both control as power source, which is great. I can go to Cadence here. I can find the Neo 2 right there. There we go. Click OK. I'll go to Heart Rate and I'll see if it's going to find my Heart Rate strap. And like that, it's Bob's your uncle, we're done. It's as simple as that. The trainer does broadcast on both Amp Plus and Bluetooth Smart, Amp Plus Control, as well as Bluetooth Smart Control, Amp Plus Power Broadcasting, as well as Bluetooth Smart Power Broadcasting, and Amp Plus Speed and Cadence, as well as Bluetooth Smart Speed and Cadence. It's basically all you can want from that standpoint. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose my route. We'll go with the figure eight. I really wish you could hear well my warehouse mates across the thing. They're actually opera singers, which is really funny because these guys sell beer for a living. Like literally they sell alcohol to bars and they are blasting out like Pacelli style right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, jump on things here and get the spin. I've got some comments here to go ahead and be able to kind of listen to or uh, record all the uh, power accuracy data that I'll show you in a little bit. And with that, we're ready to go. There is zero calibration required or even possible on the Neo. It's one of the things a lot of people love on it. You just rock and roll. So we'll go ahead and click the start button. There we go. And off we go. So, so far, I'd say it feels, it feels like a Neo. Um, I mean, it feels pretty nice. Power accuracy wise, let's take a quick look at this. They're within uh, three watts of each other right now, so not too shabby. We're going to do a little sprint trip coming up on the line. Notice the color changing down below. Oh, fourth train arrived today. Things are catching up to me. So we're going to spin around for a little while here and uh, 
We'll see how things roll. Okay, so before we wrap things up here, I'm gonna let you listen to the sound itself, by itself. First, you're hearing the lav mic right now, then we go ahead and basically switch to the on-camera mic, which gets all the ambient noise here, but it's a little more realistic. So here we go. Now, of course, keep in mind this does kind of take into account my drivetrain, how clean it is. I'd say so-so clean, fairly clean. Uh, not like spectacular, like the can of clean, but still clean enough. As well as with gear you're in, with feed you're going, all that kind of stuff. So, let's go and check out the power accuracy numbers and we'll wrap things up. Okay, so here's a quick look using the DCR analyzer of the uh, power accuracy from three different units, the SRM exact pedals, the stages, LR dual-sided, and then the uh, Zwift broadcast over amp plus. Uh, now keep in mind, going into this tax did warn me that on the kind of power surges or sprints uh, that you might see some little bit of a kind of peaking going on where it over commits on that. Uh, and that is indeed what I see through here. They, they did say that that's something that they're fixing in the next firmware update, probably just a couple days away. So they already knew that was coming. Uh, but you can see here, things are tracking very closely between those units uh, I go up right here again pretty close actually on that particular surge but you can see like right there it separates a little bit where the green one uh, which is the tax neo does go a little bit beyond it uh, and you see that exact same thing right here as well just shooting a little bit high I'm um, not like hugely high but uh, definitely a little bit more than uh, you would expect for that you know 470 watts uh, versus roughly 440 watts for the other units uh, and kind of the same right there uh, but again this is something they expected just being a little bit over committing on some of those. Uh, for the vast majority of this here though, you see that all three of them are very, very close uh, across the board. Also, if we look at the cadence, which is one of the areas that they said they changed in this, uh, you can see very, very, very close. There are a couple little nuances again in that green that uh, right through here, where it's not quite exactly the same. It goes up or down a couple over the rest of them. Uh, something that TAC says they are working on. Uh, but they also said that something that they're doing a higher cadence recording rate, which could go ahead and mean that they did different results than others. Anyways, this is just a quick look at things uh, definitely on beta firmware uh, so I'll, I'll dive into this more deeply in a full end of the review down the road once I have the final firmware for stuff uh, from an accuracy standpoint the tax neo has always been pretty much the leader out there there's no calibration on it you just get up and go uh, so I would expect kind of the same thing going forward I wouldn't expect that these little minor beta bugs will persist uh, beyond probably just the next few days if not next week or two okay so there's your first look at the new tax neo 2 uh, now again this isn't a full comprehensive review uh, I've only had one ride on a fairly short ride uh, but still I got time to do right this second definitely check out later on probably this month uh, meaning end of November maybe early December I'll do a bit more, more deep dive on this uh, as well have a full in-depth review probably down the description or whatnot there um, so obviously like a lot of folks will ask whether or not it's this or the Wahoo Kicker uh, plus the uh, Climb it's kind of a combination since essentially you can get the Kicker Core and the Climb for the same price as this and that's a tough that's a tough decision um you know obviously it's the brand new trainer so we don't know if there's any sort of like kind of early manufacturing curve type stuff that may happen there same time while who's having their own sort of early manufacturing issues with the kicker and the kicker core um with some kind of like minor mechanical things happening to some people's units so everyone's sort of on this initial new unit curve um so i think if we set that aside for a second there and just look at like specs alone uh Certainly, I love the fact that the Neo doesn't have calibration, doesn't require calibration, it just works. Uh, it's typically what I would ride normally when I'm not in the middle of like trainer testing season. Um, by the same token, the core with the climb is like one of my favorite things as well. Um, so I really don't think you can go wrong either way. Uh, but still, the Neo is definitely like my general go-to trainer year round uh, when I'm not testing other things just because it simply works every single time out of the box. I'm happy with that. Anyway, if you found this interesting, whack that like button bottom there. It really helps the channel out as well as the subscribe button. If you are not subscribed, there's plenty more sports technology goodness. Uh, definitely a little more trainer stuff. I think there's some more stuff I'm gonna be able to pop out of here in the next little while. So you definitely don't wanna miss that. And of course, just general sports technology goodness all over the place. Have a good one.